Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tier Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge art journal page for December 2019. This is the last month of the year and the last Pick a Stick Challenge. And so um, the first prompt was, well the first prompt was brilliant. And I thought it would be brilliant to use the colors, which are brilliant colors, silver, shiny metallic, and bronze, shiny metallic, brilliant. Also a brilliant idea to use my um, gel plate, my eight by 10 gel plate to create the first layer of my page. And so I got out, this, the second prompt was squares, and I was thinking about playing with grids and squares. So I got out some different stencil girl stencils and I am using pan pastel on my plate through the stencils, layering the stencils one on top of another one to create a, a pattern of squares all over the plate with different colors. Um, the red, the dark red, the even darker red, the orange, and even a little bit of the, the creamy, creamy orange color, just a little bit. Um, and I'm using a cosmetic sponge to do this and kind of picking up the pastel on the sponge and then patting it onto the plate. This is a good way to make multiple shades or colors um, on your plate because you can put it all on there and then pick it up with a thin layer of acrylic. So I needed to fill in some spaces there where the edge of the stencil was. So I'm using a different stencil. These are all from Stencil Girl. That one's a Seth Apter designed ATC stencil that has nine different designs on it for ATCs. Uh, I had Mary Beth Shaw's grids. Um, I think I had prayer flags and I had something else maybe. I don't know. Just a few, a few of my square or grid-like stencils. So then I'm putting a very thin layer of bronze metallic paint. This is ancient colored paint, a heavy body paint from Dana Wakely. And I stood up and I'm trying to press as hard as I can. I'm using the, the plate like a stamp. And as you can see, this book is so full of textured stuff and I, I just didn't get it um, pressed down hard enough. And so I ended up with these white spaces, which frustrated me. Uh, later, I turned over the page on the other side to see what was on there. And there is some uh, canvas, torn strips of canvas glued onto it. Um, just a lot of texture and I couldn't get the plate down hard enough. So my brilliant idea to use my gel plate to do my background in this case wasn't so brilliant because <laughs> of all the texture in this book. This is the second to the last clean page. The one next to it that I have covered up with deli paper to protect it is the last page in this book. So it's thick, it's chunky, it's got all kinds of pages that have buttons and fabrics and whatever, texture, paste, all kinds of stuff. So maybe not such a, a great idea. But with the pan pastel, you end up having multiple pulls off of it. If you just continue to put more paint on there, that pastel lasts on the plate for a while. So I ended up getting this other kind of interesting grungy print and I thought, well, the next prompt is cut. And so sticking with the uh, same thing of theme of squares, I would cut up some squares and maybe fill in some of that area with collage that I didn't get a good impression with the gel plate so that it wouldn't have that white look to it. So I'm using uh, some collage page, which is an Aileen's product that is glossy to do my page, any of my collage on my page today is with this gloss, glossy medium because of course the colors being silver metallic and bronze metallic, I don't wanna dull them down using a matte medium and that's what a matte medium does, it makes things matte. And so I want to use the gloss medium on the whole page. Some people you might think to themselves, uh, okay, that's gonna make your page sticky and it's gonna to stick to the page next to it when you close the book. That is true. But if you use a beeswax product like Daddy Van's uh, Furniture Polish, I have the unscented one and it just has kind of a 
citrusy note to it. It's not completely unscented, but I just use a tiny bit of that on a paper towel and I rub it over my page once it's all dry. And then that prevents that uh, page from sticking to the one next to it. Acrylic, particularly glossy, anything that has a gloss in it will stick together if they're pressed, um, pressed together for any length of time. It's annoying, but uh, using the the wax really does make a difference. So I did fill in a little bit of my page with the collage and then also I went over and integrated it some with the stencil again with just some straight acrylic paint. And then I'm cleaning my plate. If you use pan pastels or any type of pastels on your plate, it does get on there and it keeps coming off every time. For a long time, it'll continue to come off onto your next print and your next print and your next print. So if you want to clean it off, just use some baby oil and a paper towel and just wipe it off and you can you can change colors or whatever. So I wanted to make another sheet because I was planning on cutting out something. So this time I'm using green. As you can see, this page is a holiday page. Well, you can't see it yet, but red and green is gonna be a holiday page, right? I just thought with the, the colors picked this month the the metallic colors it would just be a a good thing to do a holiday page since it is uh, the month of the all of our, our holidays whatever we celebrate whether it's Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or winter solstice celebrations um, that that stuff all happens around this time of year so I just thought a tree would be good and that's what I'm planning on making that's how come I'm making an extra piece here that's in the greens. So I'm using these different greens on my Pan Pastel palette. Again, I'm using the same square grid um, theme to make this piece as well and just kind of blending the different green colors onto the plate. And then this time when I pick it up, I'll pick it up with silver. And where the stencils left any of the grid marks, that's where the silver will be. So the silver picks up the pan pastel. It also um, fills in the grid areas. So there's my silver metallic paint and I'm gonna put this one on a piece of white text weight paper because I'm gonna collage it onto my page. I don't want anything heavy. So that's how that came out. You can see it's got the silver lines all, all through it. And then I just decided to make a couple more prints because I wanted to show that you can make multiple prints out of the same pan pastel application on the gel plate. So this time I'm using text white paper in black and I put the bronze uh, paint on there. And there was still some of the silver so you kind of get a combination. And then the third print that I made I used white, white acrylic paint. You want to put a thin, you know, get don't get a bunch of glop on there. You want it to be thin or it won't pull anything up off the plate. But this is a lot of fun. It's something you can do um, with or without stencils. You could do a whole pastel painting on there and then pick it up as a print if you wanted to and get multiples. So you see I've got multiple prints there. The brightest one is the one I'm going to use, however. So I'm still not all that happy with my background. I decide to put a little bit of copper on there as well through a stencil just to integrate a little bit more because I still feel like it's it's got some weird spots that I just want to add a little bit more to. So this is copper acrylic paint and I'm putting that through uh, the, more, the brick and mortar stencil from Stencil Girl. It's a Mary Beth Shaw design, one of my very favorite stencils. I just love this one. But it helps everything to come together as a co cohesive whole because I have so many different weird things going on there. So the next prompt I didn't really feel like using. Um, remember, you can always use a wild card if one of the prompts is just not to your liking. The prompt was pad, and I, I could use an ink pad or something, but I decided instead to replace it with the prompt, the wild card prompt, heart, because hearts are one of my favorite shapes. Also, I thought if I turned the heart upside down, I could make a holiday tree out of it. And so that's what I did. I tried to make it fairly skinny and long of a heart shape. You know, sometimes love hearts are 
uh, more flat and fat than this one, but I wanted to make a long skinny heart, turned it upside down, and then made it into a tree. So now I've got the traditional holiday colors for Christmas on here, red and green. And I've also got that bronze and silver, and I have a tree. <laughs> so it's starting to look like something. Uh, this isn't my favorite page. Not every pa art journal page that you do is going to be your favorite. Um, it's about practice and trying out things and using your products and doing something creative in your day. So it doesn't have to be the most beautiful thing in the world, but it turned out okay. It's just not my favorite. I wanted to have a shadow around the edge, so I started with some uh, water-soluble graphite to make a shadow around the whole edge of the tree. And then I had this little scrap that had a star punched out of it, and it was kind of a gold color. And I figured we've got bronze, we've got silver, we might as well put some gold on there, right? <laughs> Of course. So I put that on the top of the tree to represent the star that often goes on top of a tree. Sometimes it's an angel, but in our house it's a star. And then the next prompt was swirl. And I have a stamp set that has some swirly stamps in it. And I, so I decided to use acrylic paint in ruby, lapis, um, and the silver again. And I think that's it to stamp some swirls as decoration on my holiday tree. So uh, the bigger bigger swirl I used in the silver because it was kind of large and then the smaller the smaller stamp has three smaller swirls on it but I just used one at a time um, inking them up with some acrylic paint with a sponge dauber and that works really great. Just remember to get the acrylic paint off the stamp before it's dried because it will stick there and be really hard to remove if you don't clean it off promptly. So I'm just wiping it off with a baby wipe and that's all good. So I've got some decorations going on on my tree and then I wanted to collage on some decorations as well and I had some different scraps here. There's some uh, different scraps that have some gold on them and I punched out some hearts and collaged those on there that that's gold metallic paint on different scraps that I have laying around I have scraps everywhere I have so many scraps you wouldn't even believe it it's unbelievable so I'm collaging those on with that same gloss medium so that I don't use the shot lose the shininess of the gold paint uh, one of them has crackle on it which is pretty cool but I only had a little tiny piece of that, so I only got one heart out of that. Then I grabbed some red papers and some blue papers. I punch out um, some square, like offset squares out of the red. I started to punch uh, circles, but the circle was large and also it just wasn't punching well. I think that punch has about had it. It's punched a lot of circles in its life. <laughs> so I use this kind of weird shaped uh, square, sticking with the square theme again, to punch out some different red pieces and collage those on. And then I use a star to punch out some blue pieces. And these are all scraps of different, you know, different stuff, gel prints and stencil pages and packaging and whatever. I store them in little plastic boxes by color so that I can use them for collage because I do a lot of collage and paper painting. So stick those on there with that same um, glossy medium and then I'm going to get my stars, my blue stars. So if you're liking this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells and um, you can share this on Pinterest or Facebook if you want to. All those things really help my channel and I'm very appreciative when you do that helps other people find my channel that might not find it otherwise because it allows YouTube to know that that I'm making something valuable. In addition, I must say that this this video was not made for children under 13. So I am continuing to put stars on there and I think I'm about done with the collage portion of this event. Got some stars randomly placed. And I give that a good dry. 
Then I get out a, a copper or bronze type uh, paint marker. This is a stinky marker. I don't like it. So I don't use it very often. Also, it's almost empty. And I draw around the star. I draw some little um, garland on my tree. And the pen is about dry, so I decided I would just be done with it. Put it back in the drawer. And then the last prompt out of the six prompts in order is fuzzy. And so before the show, I had taken this napkin that has some dogs on it and uh, use some napkin decoupage to glue it to a piece of uh, mixed media paper so that I would be able to easily cut out one of the dog images. And I, my idea was to put him in a present, but it was just, it was too big. There wasn't any place to put it. And so um, I was doing this during the live show and I was trying to figure out where to put this dog. And I thought, well, maybe it's just not going to work. But people in the in the live chat said hey he looks really cute in the tree and I'm thinking oh, he doesn't dogs don't climb in a tree if it was a cat if I'd got a cat cats climb in trees and sometimes knock them down but dogs don't but they're like oh it's so cute it's so cute so I just went ahead and I put the dog in the tree <laughs> for the prompt fuzzy so that was it for this page I did add some glitter this is silver glitter glue and I filled in the star with that and then put some little dots on the ornaments where they would be hooked to the tree. You know, usually you have like some type of little hooks. And so I just put like a silver dot. I also splattered some silver paint on there with the paintbrush just for a little bit of extra effect. Um, I wrote that it was the Pick a Stick Challenge December Challenge. And I darkened up and added some more shadows with a Stabilo all pencil because I wanted to put some around the dog and just added, made it a little bit darker. And of course, I blended that out with my water tank brush. So I hope you've enjoyed the page. I think I'm just about done and that is it for me. Here comes your close-ups. Bye-bye. Thank you.